an excavation site in Tunisia. Archaeologist Jeremy Clark points a camera phone at his partner, David, who sits on a gigantic brachiosaurus leg bone. Does it look big? It looks very big. It feels really hard. Very funny. Would you say humorous? <laughs> get it? Because, like, the, um, the bone? Bone, yes, I get it. Just smile, would you? All right, enough slagging off. Get off the priceless artifact, and let's get back to work now. Cheeky bastard. This is boring. This is boring. I am bored by this. Unearthing a 140 million year old Brachiosaurus is boring to you. This part, yeah. There's been 10 weeks of detailing. I want to check out the cave. We'll check out the cave after we're done here. I'm curious, though. Curiosity is, in the great and generous minds, the first passion and the last. Samuel Adams. Samuel Johnson. Oh, you know that's what I meant. Aren't you at least a little curious? I'm always curious. If I wasn't, I would never have gone up to you at that conference. You were drunk. I'm English. We don't get drunk. Besides, you're lucky I was drinking and curious. Oh, I'm lucky. Look what being curious got you. Yeah, an American headache. Californian, no less. (laughs) (sighs) You're right. This is boring. There. The cave is blocked by rocks. They're only documenting and categorizing before we... We should move them. We aren't authorized. That is what makes it fun. The team will be back tomorrow. And together, we'll just move them then, so why not now? This formation could have been here tens of thousands of years. Bullshit. You know this is from a recent shift. Couldn't have been more than a few decades like this. Take a picture so we know the assembly. Yes! Look at this. Depictions of large animals. Handprints. Finally, proof that human ancestors and dinosaurs lived together. Mm. <laughs> it is so dorky how conflating historical periods upsets you every time. I'm a man of principle. You think they're Cro-Magnon? Perhaps. But these seem too crude. See the single coloring? They may actually be our less evolved cousins. Neanderthals? Yeah. What if we never told anyone about this? Kept it a secret. Just you, me, and Mr. Caveman. Would that count as a threesome? Oh, shut it. (laughs) Ah, I don't have enough light for good pics on my phone. I'll run and grab the gear. Hold on. Thanks for being curious. It's nice to get out of the sun. No, I... I mean at that conference. (laughs) Humorous. He's lucky he's cute. Well, I've got the gear. We're going to have to make up some story about how we happened to pop... David? David! Pinball Productions presents Ghost Town. Written and directed by Adam Zof. Starring Dan Siren, Ilana White, Jared Minji, Daisy Barajas, David Myers, Max Herzfeld, Rich Owen, John Serrano, Kat Loveland, and... Levi Squire. To enjoy other pinball productions, visit pinballproductions.com. A house full of unpacked moving boxes, beer bottles, and pictures of David. Clark tries tying a tie in the mirror. History is not just a study of the past. It is a study of how our present was built. History is alive all around us. We live inside the creations of 100 billion, yes, billion people before us. Echoing all around us are their victories and their defeats. Speaking of defeats, this blasted tie. This used to be your job, David. (laughs) Northern California. From inside his mud-covered truck, Clark watches high schoolers stream into the building. Fuck up, Jeremy. These aren't exactly warlords. Oh, sorry. First day. No worries. Me too. Good luck. Hello, students. My name is... Mr. Clark. Ah, the first correct answer of this semester. Well done. 
Do I get extra credit? You do not. I will be your history professor this semester. Don't you mean teacher? Uh, teacher. Yes, right. So you're British? That's cool. Very perceptive. And thank you. What are you doing in Cali? Teaching. Or at least trying to. What's your first name? Is that really relevant? Jeremy. I googled him. Should you have your phones out? Whoa. Is this a pic of you in Egypt? That's sick. Did you climb the pyramids? Not exactly. You went all the way to Egypt and you didn't climb the pyramids? I actually went inside them. Yeah, you did. Um, well, yeah. Uh, in a former life, I was an ar- archaeologist. Yes, yeah, so, all right. Um, I'm more than happy to provide my credentials, but let's put the gadgets away, shall we? Speaking of, what is it you have in that bag? That metal detector and headphones must be 30 years old. Definitely want to be playing with garbage on your first day, new kid. Doesn't come off weird at all. I'm sorry, I was just... Does that thing even work? It does now. Daniela, bend over. I've found the pirate's booty. Arr! <laughs> I like to buy things from the Salvation Army. See if I can fix them. Ah, I used to do the same in the charity shops back home as a boy. Hey, new kid. Maybe fix the shower at your house. Damn. All right, let's settle down. Miss uh, Janet, is it? Can you take the headphones off, please? What? I can't hear you because of the headphones. I said, let's take our seats, shall we? Here you are. Oh, Russell. Pretty cool, Russell. Thanks. So what's a strapping British archaeologist doing teaching us losers? (laughs) Yeah, shouldn't he be out swinging from a whip or something? If only archaeology really was that glamorous. For now, my funding's dried up and my explorations have been put on the back burner. So, what, you like answered an ad on Craigslist to teach you or something? Pretty much, and I would be derelict in my duties if I didn't ask that we put down the gadgets and start learning. Contrary to popular belief, history is not the study of the past, it's the study of how our present was built. History is alive. It's all around us. <laughs> all I see is some concrete walls, some maps, and some virgins. Speak for yourself, right, Daniela? Shut up, baby. Ow. I'm not a virgin either, Mr. Clark. Um, right. Okay, um, noted. Uh, how about we take out our textbooks? I forgot mine. Me too. Me three. I remembered mine. Great. But it's in my car. Right. I'm beginning to think you all are having a go. New teacher and all. It is the first day, Mr. Clark. Maybe show us some archaeological stuff. Hey, Mr. Clark, maybe think about washing your truck at least once a lifetime? Have you ever visited Tunisia? Um, can't say I have. Here you are. Now Tunisia has visited you. (laughs) What the hell is all this stuff? That is a resistivity gauge. It measures soil's resistance to electricity. Oh. What's this one? Ground penetrating radar. (laughs) Penetrating? Is that a plasma spectrometer? That's right. It excites metal and measures the vibration. Correct. You know your stuff. Yeah. I mean, never used one, because... You're part of the Salvation Army. No. And they don't really have an army. How you know? You tried to sign up, didn't you? So which one of these are you going to show us, Mr. Clark? The time machine. Time machine? That's a shovel, Mr. Clark. Uh, Yes, well, think of this soil as time. The deeper we dig, the farther back we go. Still looks like dirt to me. Every inch of soil took 500 years to form. Do you see that down there? This was the topsoil thousands of years ago. Before any of what you see around you even existed. That's even before Taylor Swift, Daniela. Not possible. She created life. Hold on, so you saying this dirt is like as old as Jesus? In its time, this dirt never even heard of Jesus. Besides, it was only about 500 years ago that the Bible made its way to California. Was still just Native Americans up till then. (laughs) And your wardrobe. You know, Michael, you seem very smart. 
Thanks, Mr. Clark. But you clearly make jokes at others' expense to cover up your own insecurities. Oh, snap, Mr. Clark. Way to clap back, teach. I don't know what that means. I was only suggesting young Michael here learn to use his intellect to appreciate information when it's given to him. Um, it's okay, Mr. Clark. He was just kidding. Yeah, besides, someone's got to be funny around here. Back to the lesson. Archaeology is the hunt for history. Information buried away, yet to be unlocked. Secrets. Yes, that's it. I know about a secret. This ought to be good. There's a town, supposedly. Like 30 miles from here. North, on I-65. Nobody's lived there for a while. Because it's haunted. What's it called? Spooky Town. Hatley. Again with the phones. Nothing shows up. He's probably making it up. No, my uncle told me. Oh, okay. Then your uncle made it up. There's no such thing as ghosts, I'm afraid. Believe me, if I haven't seen anything in two decades of opening up centuries-old crypts, then they don't exist. It's real. Real buildings and everything. Just nobody lives there. And nobody goes there. Or maybe they did and never came back. Huh, maybe you should check it out, Radio Shack. I was gonna. Is that what the metal detector was for? Maybe. I think it's cool, Mr. Clark. This history stuff. I think you're cool. Cool. Um, very cool. Come to think of it, why are there only five of you in my class? There was an assembly in the gym. We were hiding out. I suppose that means class is dismissed. Hey, Russell. Thanks for occupying the teacher. Getting us out here. We almost got stuck reading. Yeah, sure. No worries. What in the hell? My, my apologies. I'll just put that right back in there. <laughs> Ghosts. <laughs> what do you think about that, David? I suppose nothing. At least, nothing I can hear because, well... Ghosts don't exist. Still, an abandoned town. It could be interesting. One quick search and that's it. Hatley, California. Zero results. Okay, let's check the satellite image. And... Oh. Nothing. Continue on Interstate 65 for zero minutes. Proceed to the route. Come on, Proceed come on. Oh, jeez. Even in Tunisia, this GPS. Proceed to like the I route. Like I fell off the end of the world. Hello there. Um, I have a question. Where are you from? I'm from England. Never been. Well, you should go sometime. I don't like to travel. Then you shouldn't. Um, I'm looking for a town, Hatley. Yeah, it's supposedly back down that stretch of highway, but uh, I didn't seem to pass by it. You gonna buy something? Uh, here, a candy bar. Something substantial? All right, um, I'll take a pack of cigarettes. Uh, smoking's bad for you. Uh, look, here's ten dollars. That's yours, you can keep that. Now, can I ask my question? Sure. Do you know the town of Hatley? Nope. Hardly seems worth ten dollars. Guess it was to you. Bad for your health. I'll show you. I'll smoke these cigarettes is what I'll... Is that what I think it is, David? A payphone? With a phone book? One solid clump. Rained on and dried out hundreds of times. What's this then, huh? Hatley, right there. What you want with Hatley? Never mind that. Why do you want to stop me from going there? Can't you take a hint? You're no longer invited to England. What do we have here? An entire orange grove with one line of trees standing above them all. Darker soil, deeper soil. Hmm. 
been turned over, don't you think, David? I say we follow it. These oranges are huge. Jesus Christ! I I'll, I'll pay you for the orange. Uh, please, D don't shoot. What the hell kind of accent is that? Uh, b British. Well, you should have sent Paul Revere ahead of you. Thought you was a pheasant. You normally get pheasants in an orange grove? No, but on occasion, that's why I grabbed my shotgun. I love some pheasant. Daddy used to make pheasant jambalaya. Mm -mm. Like his daddy before him. That's fascinating. But I'm not a pheasant. I can see that. But you are trespassing. I, I do apologize. Actually, maybe you can help me. I'm looking for a town. A place called Hatley. This look like a town? Uh, no, um, and I may be on a wild pheasant chase, but your soil here appears turned over. This darker shade is from a lower depth than that around it. It's why this row of orange trees is higher than those. Better nutrients. You're trying to tell me how to farm? No, 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 not at all. No, it just leads me to believe there was once a road here, and that that road was torn up for a reason. Looks like it was just to plant more orange trees. Look, I don't know nothing about a road or Hatley or any of your fantasy story. I've been tending these trees for 40 years. They were my daddy's trees before me and his daddy's. His daddy's before then. I do understand. Are you sure, though? Because another man lied to me about Hatley. You calling me a liar? Not while you're holding that shotgun. Good. Like I said, I can't help you. Now, if you'd kindly remove yourself from my property. You know... I think that's an excellent idea. In fact, I think I might just run. Huh. English are sure strange. Nice work, new kid. You lured a teacher right to us. What the hell? Howdy, Mr. Clark. What are you all doing here? We're investigating, being archaeologists. Where did you get the drone, Russell? I mean, not, not that you wouldn't have one. I, I just... It's mine. I got it for Christmas, but I never learned to fly it. But when I saw Inspector Gadget right here in class today, I learned online. So you're all out here in the forest watching Russell fly a drone? Yep. Right. Where's the booze? What? Janet! Was that too much? Have with the bottle. Ah, <sighs> fine. How'd you know? There's only two things that teenagers do when they're out in the middle of nowhere. What's the other? Never mind that. What about you, Mr. Clark? Why are you out here? I, um... He's looking for Hatley. Mm, perhaps. Uh, perhaps I am. We are too. I don't know that you should be. The locals don't seem too thrilled with people snooping around. But did you have any luck? Not just yet. You? I did notice something. There used to be a road off the highway, through the orange grove. It's bound to have gone somewhere. With the drone and your expertise, we can cover a lot of ground. A we now, is it? Unless you want to just go home. <sighs> well, we are all here. Might as well make it a teachable moment. All right, Mr. Clark, now we're... Put it out! Oh, come on! Dude! Please, cinnamon snaps. I've saved you from making a grave mistake. Now, let's hurry while we still have the line. Oof, your car stinks, Mr. Clark. What happens when you transport a 3,000-year-old mummy? Oh, really? That is so awesome. Any luck with the drone, Russell? Uh, just more oranges. Follow the elevated line of trees. Then look for a break among the grove. A water source. A, a creek of some sort. Follow it. Water equals population centers. Uh, there. I've got one. Good man. Uh, houses. A bunch of them. I... Uh, I... <laughs> What's happening? He's having a seizure. Quick, get the goggles off him. The drone! How about I put the goggles on? Nobody cares about the drone. I care! I got it. Take care of him. Somebody elevate Russell's head. I can do it. It's gonna be okay. Pull up, pull up! I'm trying. I can't see shit. Just stay calm, baby. I see the ground. I see... It's dead. Shit. Russell, 
Are you okay? Yeah. It happens sometimes. Okay, he's fine. What about my drone? I'll buy you another drone. It's eight hundred dollars. Well, we'll figure something out then. Man, Ugh, relax. It's not like you paid for it. No, but my parents did. I asked for it for like two months. If I lose it, they gonna kill me. If they kill me, I'ma kill you. You, you dork. I'm sorry. All right. It's okay, Russell. I can fix it. We can go get it. We? Nah, you gotta go get it. How far? Half a mile up the forest, then a left around the orange grove. Holy shit! That is correct. These houses are so old. It's like we got in a time machine. Yes, it is. I'm checking it out. Janet, wait! I'm going too. Students. Oh, all right then. Out we go. All the houses are exactly the same. Post World War II tracked housing, built to accommodate GIs coming back and starting families. Identical because they were mass produced. Houses like these were where the baby boom was born. People were doing it a lot, huh? It's not like they have TikTok or Netflix. I'd be doing it too. I hear that. <laughs> oh, this is so creepy. Did you feel right at home here, Hanu、huh, kid? Me? No, I don't. The houses trail off. What happened here, Mister Clark? The money must have run out. Many of these small towns barely made it through the Great Depression and the First World War. With the men gone in the Second Conflict, the economies were hit even harder. Looks like they tried to make a go, but alas, notice the train tracks. All this stuff is growing over it. And they took the metal. My guess is the train stopped servicing the town, and desperate citizens began tearing it up for scrap. As money runs out, people turn on the town, turn on each other.、Oh, we found it, Hatley, California. Population twenty-five thousand. Yeah, somebody needs to update that sign. Whoa, this car was just left in the street. I wonder if it works. Daniela, get shotgun. Be careful what you touch. Someone left this car behind, and no one claimed it, and we don't know why. Um, I'm good, sis. Whoa, this thing is filled with suitcases. It appears to be a late 1930s model Ford. Janet, what does the odometer read? Uh, thirty-five thousand. That's about a decade worth of miles. Along with the unfinished tract housing, it all points to this town being given up on sometime in the late 1940s. Hey guys, I got a newspaper. So much for not touching anything. June seventeenth, nineteen forty-eight. Nice work, Mister Clark. What's it say? Mysterious illness continues to ravage Hatley. And I'm out of the car. Russell, go on. Cases of malady continue to puzzle local doctors. Malady? A catch-all term for an unexplained medical problem. The town begins to collapse. Residents are short on money. Food and some sort of disease sets in. The gradual demise then accelerates until a final collapse. To quote Hemingway, it goes bankrupt slowly, then all at once. That's how you arrive at a ghost town, an abandoned location. You gotta unnerd that for a stage. Well, Hartley was weakened by circumstance, but finished off by something else. So disease. And then the new kid touched the paper, and then Janet got in the car, and then anything communicable through objects would have left bodies in the streets. Hey, Teach. There's your body in the street. Okay, no touching rule in effect. I had never seen a body before. It's just as creepy as I'd hoped. By the nice dress and long hair, this was a woman who owned this car. Oh, what happened to her skull? Some sort of weapon, probably a knife. Eternal rest grant unto her, Lord, and may she rest in peace. Amen. Damn, eternal rest is right. The petrol tank. What? The gas tank on the car. Take a coin and throw it in. Listen for a splash or a clang. Nobody's got coins, Mister Clark. She's got a purse. Here are some coins. Got it. A woman is dressed nicely with a purse. She wasn't expecting trouble. An abandoned car nearby, filled with luggage. Mr. Clark, splash. It 
didn't run out of gas. And no one bothered to take the luggage, or the car, or even siphon the gas out. But they'd already taken the railroad apart because everybody was desperate. Hey, Mr. Clark. She had a gun? She seems well off, yet she had a pistol. Aware of danger, perhaps, but she had no time to draw it. Whatever happened right here happened quickly and violently. It wasn't about money, but it wasn't about disease either. We should leave. Uh, But things are just getting good. It is getting dark. I don't want to be here at night. I'm responsible for you all, even if I've been irresponsible so far. Come on now, back to the car. What about my drone? Just ask Mommy and Daddy for another. Damn, Mike. Thrift Store Ninja got your ass. That doesn't sound good. Ah, not to worry. This thing started in sandstorms and snowstorms. Hey, maybe Radio Shack over here can fix it. Want me to take a look, Mr. Clark? It's fine, it's fine. Come on now, old girl. Let's go. Shit! Radio works. It shouldn't. Let's just turn it off. That did not work. What the? What's going on? Mr. Clark! Out of the car! Everybody out of the car! What the hell was that? Ow! Ah, ah, shit, my phone! Mine too! Me too! I just got that! Mr. Clark, what's going on? An electrical surge of some sort? You have no idea, do you? Well, no! There isn't much cause for electrical knowledge when you study thousands of years back in time. This has nothing to do with electricity. There must be a logical explanation. Yeah, that something's seriously wrong with this place. That I agree with. Well, we'll go on foot. Come on now. Stay close. Everybody keep your eyes on... Everyone else. Why are we back in Hatley? We were just here. What the hell just happened? We were just here. Okay, everyone, just keep your heads. We were just here. Mr. Clark, something really bad is happening. We were just here. We have to stay calm. We were just here. Russell's right. We were just here. Michael! We were just... Here! Mr. Clark, what is going on? I... I don't know, kids. But just stick together. We need to call for help. Call for help? With what? And what are they going to do? We're locked inside this town! We can't be locked inside a town. Well, we sure as hell having a hard time leaving. Mr. Clark, you only believe in reality and what you can see and that's great. But we got a new reality here. Le Pont Saint-Esprit. Oh man, he's losing it! It's a town in France. In 1951, there was a mass hallucination. Around 250 people suffered from visions and voices, and the culprit? Ergot poisoning. The key element in LSD. Mr. Clark, if we're on acid, well, how do I say this? I would be able to tell. What I'm saying is, there may be a naturally occurring reason this town was abandoned. And it may be affecting us. We should find a phone. A phone? Where? A town this old would have copper landlines. They don't need electricity. They might still be working. Um, That building there. It's brick. The bricks would protect the lines. Uh, That building is creepy as hell. As opposed to being out here with the body and the vibes? I think we'd all agree we have to try something. I see the building. Me too. Great, sure. Real confident in this plan. Paul, baby, what are we doing? I trust Mr. Clark. He's smart. And Russell, too. (laughs) Thanks. We should try the building. At Lee Hospital. Perfect. Sure, there aren't any bodies in here. Mr. Clark and I will go. Calm down, Captain America. I'm just trying to lead. (laughs) Men. Out of my way. I'm going too. (sighs) Screw it. It's best if we all stay together. Oh, I really don't want to go in. Don't worry, babe. I got you. Right. Well, off we go, I suppose. (laughs) 
We are officially in the creepiest place on Earth. What's the plan, Teach? I imagine we follow the electrical piping. That should lead us to a telephone. How the hell are these lights even on? Most of the reason a bulb burns out is turning them on and off. You just leave them on, well... I don't even want to know how you know that. There's a bunch of beds with, um, patients in them? Oh my god! It's not like we've never seen a body. Today. Just gonna have one look. What's he doing? Mr. Clark, can we maybe just leave the dead bodies alone? Whatever happened here may give us clues on how to stay safe. Ugh, dude just can't resist getting in the shit. That one is somehow worse than the last. The sheet has preserved the specimen, making it sort of a... Mummy? Right. I can't look! What's with the holes on the side of its head? Someone, check another one. No way. On it. Same over here. A hole in each temple. Lobotomies. An instrument was inserted in the temples, and tissue connecting the frontal lobe was cut. To kill them? To treat them. What the hell? For what? Mental health issues. Drilling into your head seems like it'll cause some mental health issues. It was their best guess at help at the time. Many people lived a very painful existence to give us our modern world. Students, this is not a regular hospital. It's an asylum. Madness was definitely part of this town's downfall. Well, that's not contagious, so that's good. Unless it was caused by something contagious. This town is so messy. We just need to stay calm. It was the town's reaction that accelerated its demise. Phone. It's dead. Looks like the wiring's frayed. Radio Shack? That's not my name. Fine. Geek Squad. Can you fix it? <sighs> um, maybe. Hey, maybe is as good as it gets right now. Go for it, Russell. Hey, guys! Maybe this will help. Daniela, wait! <gasps> Someone's alive! If they're alive, I'm gonna be pretty impressed. Electroshock therapy. Back! Back away from the table. They left them to rot. You fixed it. Way to go, radio. I didn't fix it. That's unfortunate. Give it to me. Hello? As we explore the distant shore and fill our pockets with shining ore. What is it? Have a listen. On the cold, damp ground, we'll sleep sound. Except when wolves come out. I can't take it anymore. I'm turning it off. <gasps> the lights! Daniela! I've got the switch. Where's Russell? Russell? New kid! Oh, come on, man! Russell! Janet, stay with the group. Janet, wait! Don't get separated! Russell! Oh, don't you cry. Stop! Everyone, quiet! You can hear sad. faster than you can run. We'll all come back. Bye and bye. Follow that. Don't breathe a fear, nor shed a tear. It's a nurse. An old one. She looks young. I mean a regular age nurse from an old time. But wait for us throughout the years. You believe in ghosts now, Mr. Clark? I'm not sure what I believe anymore. Hello! We're looking for our friend. On the cold, damp ground, we'll all sleep sound. That's what the voice on the phone said. Except when wolves come howling round. Would you mind elaborating? I guess not. Follow me. How is she so fast? You serious? She could do whatever she wants. Why not just disappear? She's leading us somewhere. Yeah, to our deaths. Russell! <laughs> Russell! Janet! He jumped! Who jumped? Russell! You sure? Yes! No. I don't know. Someone did. Or something. I'm looking. Michael, careful. He's down there. No! Oh my god. Shit. No, I mean Russell. He's alive. He's down there. What? We need to get down there. Go back through the hospital? She's right. Look around. There should be a fire escape. Over there. 
He's gone. Where the hell is he? Russell! Maybe he's... What? Dead! If he was dead, there'd be a body. I don't think we can presume anything anymore. Janet, think. Did you see Russell jump? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And what does it matter? What if something got him in the hospital? He could have been killed and that could have been his... Ghost! Are we really going to wait around for that to happen to us? Mr. Clark, what should we do? The most important thing is finding Russell. The most important thing is getting the hell out of here. With Russell. We keep going and who knows how many of us end up missing. What if he just went investigating and got lost? No one has actually been hurt yet. Yet. Students. Hello there, little boy. This all must come together somehow. There's no such thing as illogical. There's only logic you can't see. Hmm. Not at all confusing. What do we do? You're my students. I allowed this to happen. I must find Russell. Stay here together. I'll follow the boy. David, if you're somewhere listening, I could really use your help from the other side. What am I saying? Maybe I've gone mad. What did you just hear? Nothing. Who's David? Never mind that. Stay close. We formed a band, and we're all well in. To journey far across the land. Oh yeah, this is normal. Totally normal. At least I got you back in class. The memories shall bring to mind. The love of those who left behind. What are we supposed to do here? The child came here to show us something. Why doesn't he just tell us? Perhaps he can't. Paul, put your hand near that stove in the corner. Weird. It's lit, but no heat. This is just an image. A memory. We keep seeing pieces of time. Echoes of the past. Moments that happened in places they occurred. But they're not happening now. The little boy. He wants us to figure it out. He's leading us through the history of the town of... Whatever it is that happened here. Why? Why is not a question that I think we can answer yet. First, let's find him among the children. And where is too sick with a spade or pig? Oh, God. What's with their eyes? Uh, they're dead? In general, I don't think that helps things. I don't think they had lens crafters back then either. We take out lungs and snake his Mr. Clark, these are new parts of the song. That's correct, Daniela. Let's write it down. There's no chalkboard. I can remember it. You can? Why do you talk to her like that? I don't. Do I? Mike. Well, not gonna lie, you are kind of the patriarchy sometimes. On the cold damp ground, we sleep sound. Except when wolves come howling around. Yeah, like that. That's what we heard before. Anybody see the kid? No. Nope. He's not here. That's what he's showing us. The desk right there is empty. Open it. William Billings, age 9, 32 Cherry Street, Hatley. What was that? An Indian. Native American. Yeah, of course. Sorry. What's he got to do with any of this? I'm not sure, but I think the home of William Billings may tell us. And hopefully lead us to... Hey, guys. Russell! Dude, come here. Oh, thanks. Well, what the hell happened to you? I don't know. I was standing in the hospital, the lights went out, and then I was standing behind you guys. You swear that you're okay? Yeah, I feel fine. You just, like, lost the time or something. Maybe you went to another dimension. What? Hey, man, after the shit we seen... I ain't putting nothing past this creepy-ass town. Maybe the town made Russell go missing, so we'd find out the little boy was missing. Now that Russell is back, maybe we'll find out what happened to... William Billings. Age 9. 32 Cherry Street. Perfect! More creepy music. Mr. Clark, you've been in scarier places than this, right? Yes, but there was always death inside. Mr. Clark said the ghosts are just images. 
echoes. They can't move things. That sounds like a real person. I'll go. Would you guys like me to go in? Students, stay here. Shh, Mr. Clark. Your shushing is just as loud as the... Who's there? Sure looks like a ghost. I think she's blind. I can hear you looking at me. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we, I seem to be lost. I, I saw your lights on, and I wondered if I might be able to come inside, get my bearings. I have a gun. You should know that. Noted. Very much so. Come in, but make it quick. I can't tell you how relieved I am that you're, um... I'm what? Present? Guys, let's go in. She's got a gun muscle. She's blind. Long as we're quiet, we can investigate. Maybe Mr. Clark is enough to handle this one. I mean, real lady, no matter how dusty, she bound to have a phone or a telegraph machine or some shit. Come on. After all we've seen, this is William Billings' house. We gotta go inside. And I have to pee. Oh, wait. Just everyone stay quiet. Soon as Mr. Clark's gone, you assume you're the leader. You know, I am captain of the football team. Hmm, the one with no women on it? This is a lovely home you have here. Cut the bull crap. Why you talk like that? I'm British. I don't trust the British. You have an opinion about the British? Just formed it. You said you was lost. I'll call the police for you. You have a phone! Course I have a phone. What am I gonna live out here disconnected from society? No, 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 I just, uh, please. The police would be most welcome. Phone's in the kitchen. Have a seat. And don't move. Mr. Clark. What are you doing in here? We're going to search the house. And P. She has a phone. She's calling the police. She might be a real person, but she's living in this thousand-year-old house. In this town. And you trust her? Fair point. Well made. Keep her distracted and we'll look around. <coughs> you okay, British boy? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, quite okay. Just uh, a bit of a bit of a throat. A bit of a frog in the throat. Bit of a frog. Huh? I'll fetch you some water. Water, yes. Splendid. Splendid. We're stuck by this squeaky ass floor. Okay. Count of three. One, two, three. <coughs> Police will be here soon. Here's your water. That sure is an interesting colour, uh, uh, but the cough has subsided. Cheers. We should split up. Oh, should we? Shouldn't we? Yeah, we should. Two upstairs, two in the basement. That's only four. Wait, where's Russell? Jesus, somebody has to put a bell on a new kid. Mr. Clark, the song. Russell, what are you doing? Listen. What is that? I, I just thought I'd play a record while we wait. Uh, so so how, how long have you lived here? Long enough. What is it you're doing in Hatley? Oh, uh, just, just sightseeing. Taking in the culture. Culture, huh? Not a lot to sightsee at night. Ah, oh, well, I, I, I lost track of time and it got dark and other things. On the cold, damp ground... We'll sleep sound. Except when wolves come howling round. That's it, all right? Look at these pictures. That's Will Billings. And that must be his dad. And that's his mom. Who's now the old lady. What are we even looking for? Have we been looking for anything all night? I think we just keep going and let them show us. We can't see shit. Look around for a light. How am I supposed to look around for a... I got something. 
<sighs> I think we found what we weren't looking for. I'm gonna try talking to it. Don't call it it. You just called it it. You know what I mean. Um, hi there. William? Hi there. Come here, you little it. Well, what might you be cooking? I thought I told you to stay put. I'm sorry. It smells delicious. I couldn't resist. Jambalaya. Jambalaya? I do love a good jambalaya. Wouldn't reckon they got jambalaya where you're from. Hard to find, yes. That's why I enjoy it so much. This must be William's bedroom. Nothing has changed. That lady's been living here all these years. In this house. In this town. Look at this drawing. It looks like a bird. These below, they're people. They're praying. Maybe it's an angel? It's red. The devil? Wait, that's red crayon. What's this red? That's blood. You still have to go to the bathroom? I'll go outside. He's scared of us. I'm not gonna hurt you, buddy. Oh, he's screaming, but nothing. This already happened. He's not screaming at us. Jenny, turn around! Holy shit. You won't believe what we found. You won't believe what we saw. William Billings was murdered in that basement by his father. Oh my god, look at this picture. There's blood on it. This picture must have been why. And that woman in there is his mother. We gotta get Mr. Clark and the new kid and get the hell out of here. God, this damn floor. Uh, you, you'll have to give me the recipe. Uh, Excuse me. Oh, shit. Who else is here? I, uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I can smell you, boy. Who is it that you're talking about? And I want you out of my house, British boy. B but the police? Nobody's called the police. Y you're blind. How good could your aim be? Keep talking. I won't have any problems finding you. No, wait! <laughs> Take the record! Run! Come on, Russell! Mr. Clark! Everybody run! <laughs> Wait. We need to stop. <sighs> Russell, let's have a look at you. <sighs> the bullet appears to have gone clean through. Holy shit! Ooh, that's gotta hurt. It, it does, but I'm okay. Mr. Clark, the record. The lyrics right here. On the cold, damp ground, we'll sleep sound, except when wolves come howling round. It's what we've heard all night. This appears to be an old gold rush mining song, but that would predate William Billings by a hundred years. Never mind that. We saw that boy die in the basement. He was murdered by a man. It must have been his father. Right after he drew this picture. We think it's the devil. Really? Okay. The boy definitely lived there. Died there. What we don't know for sure is what this picture or, or what the music has to do with it. If he was murdered... He was definitely murdered. I think I know our next step. Good. Let's go. Russell, you've been shot. Save your strength. We're not stopping. We're not coming this far and stopping. Very well, then. seem to be drawing a crowd. That could be good. It might mean we're closer. To what, though? To whatever they want us to find. <gasps> or whatever they don't want us to find. We're here. <laughs> Mr. Clark, we getting clocked by every dead person in town from the Old West to World War II. You really want to go in this cemetery? This is a lot. Even for me. Who don't you see? The kid. Exactly. We need to find his grave. That's why you brought the shovel. Yes. Oh, man. 
But if he was murdered, wouldn't they hide the body? Perhaps, but places of burial offer intimate clues about a person outside of the body. There was a ceremony, and even though his father may have killed him, he also would have handled his burial. He might have put something in the casket. I've seen all sorts of secrets that were intended to be buried forever, only to be dug up and tell the truth. That makes so much sense. But there's hundreds of headstones. Look at the dates. Those who died in the mid to late 1940s should have similar stone types. Then look for one of those stones next to one from a few decades later. If that was his mother back there... William and his father would be buried here. Very good, Daniela. I found it! There's dirt here. What's up, Mr. Claw? Um, nothing. Uh, who wants to take the other shovel? Russell, maybe? I would, but my arm... <sighs> right. Oh, so now no one wants to step up. Fine. Give it here. That's it. We're there. Good. I am out of this hole. <sighs> Can I... Open the casket? You want to open it? When am I ever gonna get a chance like this again? God, I am so sorry for what's about to happen. And you know, everything else tonight too. Off you go, Janet. I can't look! Holy shit. It's empty. Except for a Bible. What does that mean? It means he was killed just like how they said. They wanted to hide it. Very quick of you, Russell. So, what now? We find Will Billings' body. Where? It's a whole town. It could be anywhere. This Bible is our clue. We're going where secrets were kept in a small town in 1945. Churches have long held secrets. The Catholic Church created rat lines in Germany to help Nazis escape. Then there's the matter of systemic child abuse. They also helped American slaves escape in the Underground Railroad. Throughout history, the church has served as a soul of populations. Good and evil flowing from it. So where are we looking? Mike, Paul, Janet and Daniela. Search the main hall and any nooks and crannies just off it. Russell, I wonder if you might help me search the priest quarters. Uh, sure. Mr. Clark, where do you think... Mr. Clark, I can't believe I didn't see it. First day at school, you were the only one without a cell phone. Yet you knew exactly who I was. Mr. Clark, I don't know what you're- You brought up Hatley in our discussion. You figured if I heard about it, it might be enough to lure me in. And I stupidly fell for it. I- You're why there's any electricity in this town, aren't you? I- That was your grandmother. You led us to Will Billings' house, to your house. But your grandmother didn't know about the plan. But you still needed the echo of Will Billings' death to be seen. And when the others saw what you wanted them to, they caused a stir and your grandmother got restless. Then- She shot you. She meant to shoot you. I saved you. You saved your path to whatever it is you're looking for. You knew the tools in my truck, even the plasma spectrometer. You pushed us forward through a story you've already seen. You wanted my help, our help, looking for whatever you've been searching for. Mr. Clark, I can explain. What have you been searching for? Yeah, new kid. What are you looking for? I'm sorry. That doesn't answer the question. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Still not answering the question. I... Answer the question! Gold. Just like on the record. Gold. The curse from ancient Egypt on. 7,000 years of bloodshed. And counting. Nobody's been hurt except me, okay? Excuse me? We're trapped in a haunted town because of you. We can find it together. Share it. That's not the point. I mean, it helps. It does help. But we have no idea where it is, or how to get out of here. There's also that. We can find it. I've never made it this far. Mr. Clark? Russell, you need to tell us everything right now. I do live in that house. She is my grandmother. We came here to squat and look for the gold. I've tried everything. I've seen everything we have did tonight countless times. It led me to Will Billings' grave and... Yes, I dug it up and found the Bible, but I didn't think anything of it. I don't know what you know. I don't know why the town is the way it is. We couldn't leave when we tried, but you came to school. How? I don't know that either. It never happened to me. 
Maybe the town knows we can find the gold now. Maybe it's keeping you all here until we find it. Or maybe it's keeping us all here because it knows we're looking for it. Even if we didn't know. Anyone believe a word coming out of Russell's mouth? Nope. Hell no. Not really. Not exactly a receptive audience, Russell. God works in mysterious ways. And there are a lot of mysterious ways in this town. I don't believe in God. You didn't believe in ghosts either. He wants us to find it, Mr. Clark. And I know you can do it. Mr. Clark, are you really taking this serious? Is there another path forward? In the 1500s, Queen Elizabeth assumed the throne of England. She targeted priests as a threat to her rule. Those priests would build hiding places to avoid capture. In the years to come, churches became where all manner of things were hidden. If there is gold hidden in Hatley, and it hasn't already been dug up, the priest quarters would be where to look first. Protected from the townspeople and whatever went on out there. Take an object, like this candlestick, and test the walls. Whatever you can find. I can't believe this shit. I said I was sorry. Sorry? I stuck up for you. How old even are you? Nineteen. Hmm. Explains why I was attracted to you. If it makes you feel better, my shoulder really hurts. Good. What if we find the gold? What if we trapped here forever? I don't think that's gonna happen. Nobody cares what you think. Found something in this closet. You ever made it this far, new kid? <laughs> no. That's hopefully a good thing. It's only getting darker, Mr. Clark. Light the candles. <gasps> They're everywhere! What the hell is that? A giant bird skeleton. That is a pteranodon. A goddamn dinosaur? Technically a 90 million year old reptile. So, a dinosaur. Uh, for our purposes, sure. Yep, dinosaur is fine. Do you explain anything, Mr. Clark? Let's see then. There are skeletons bound in prayer position before the pteranodon. Ornate necklaces of bone around their neck, pottery and arrowheads are bound. These here seem to be Native Americans. Like the one we saw in the school. Correct. When Native Americans discovered dinosaur bones, they sometimes made up myths about them. Thought they were dragons or griffins, even giants. These seem to be chiefs. Medicine men, spiritual leaders, bound on the floor, eternally praying to the fossil. They must have discovered this fossil and dug the cave around it, and it became a place of worship. Why tie themselves up there? Well, that was done by others. When settlers in the American Gold Rush came into contact with the indigenous people, bloodshed was inevitable. They tortured them, enslaved them, killed them. Those who came to Hatley during the Gold Rush must have discovered the chamber. Before 1841, the term dinosaur didn't even exist. With Bible in hand, they may have believed the Pteranodon was their Christian devil. And if so, saw the natives' worship of it to be, well, troublesome, to say the least. They may have bound them and sacrificed them as a result. But why build the church on top of it? Fear. The source of most violence. And gods, for that matter. They were afraid to destroy this, and afraid others would find it. Mr. Clark... These back here have settlers' clothes. Seems over time, whatever secret the town wanted to hide, ended up here. Look, Will Billings' drawing. He was drawing the pteranodon and this room. And this skeleton here is smaller, with a broken skull. I believe we found Will Billings' final resting place. So, he saw this through the picture. His father saw the picture and killed him. And they put him down here. But why? And what's going on with this town? I don't know. What about the gold? Russell, there is no gold. Or, or maybe there is, but it's not here. Hidden somewhere else, or already taken. And I'm exhausted, as I'm sure the others are. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. So what do we do now? We, <laughs> we go home. You are on your own. But we have to keep looking. We figured out what happened to the kid. That's what they wanted, right, Mr. Clark? It would make sense. As much as anything does in Hatley. But the gold has to be... Well, forget the gold! You can stay here and play Prospector. We're leaving. Mr. Clark! Not to you, I'm not. I'm Mr. Clark to them, not you.
Mr. Clark, we got a problem. Oh, bloody hell. What kind of bullshit you up to, boy? Now you're definitely not invited to England. Uncle Roy, Uncle El, no! These are my friends! The hell we are. Mike. Sure, best friends. Please don't shoot. I'm trying to find the gold. I'm closer than ever. Closer than ever to getting it taken right out from under our nose. Are we really arguing about non-existent gold? Daniela. Oh, shut up, baby. Nothing scares me at this point. Gentlemen, I'm afraid we can't help you with your search for gold. Uh, we do wish you all the luck in the world, though. Now, if you'll just excuse us... You ain't going nowhere. I beg your pardon? You've seen too much. What we've seen, we never want anything to do with again. Right, students? Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You can let them go, Uncle Roy. You ain't making the decisions here, boy. You decide and got us into this mess. What mess? You're free to do as you please. You want to come back here with others? Find what we spent three years looking for. That doesn't make sense. It's completely illogical. We want nothing to do with this town. I don't think they care about logic, Mr. Clark. <laughs> oh, this shit again. He's probably faking. Nah, he's just doing his trembling. He sees as a real. That's what you want to call him, sure. He has epilepsy. What? The seizures. Is it a medical condition he's had since birth? Why do you care? Answer. Nah, only since we got to town. Oh my god. What, Mr. Clark? I know what happened to the town. Russell. Yeah? You've been living here, so you've been drinking the water. Of course, but we've been boiling it. Well, that makes it a certainty then. What the hell is he talking about? You want your gold? I'd let him do his thing. To render gold, early miners used mercury to separate it from other materials. It was only a matter of time before the mercury got into the water supply. It can't be boiled away, and when ingested, mercury poisons the brain. You're making this stuff up. It causes insanity. This town suffered from madness. It explains the asylum. It explains so much of what's gone on here. What's that got to do with me? Your grandmother is blind. She's old. But I bet she wasn't blind when you arrived here. The students we saw in the school. Their eyes. They were white like your grandmother's. Not because they were... Ghost. Echoes of the past. But because they were also blind. That's why the classroom didn't have a chalkboard. Because why have a chalkboard if no one can see it? Correct, Daniela. What the hell are you getting at? You're looking for gold that we have no interest in, and you still got a gun in our face. He's saying you're crazy! I'm saying your illogical behavior has a logical cause. You are suffering from mercury poisoning, just as everyone who's lived here since they first discovered gold in the 1840s. That makes a lot of sense. You need help, Russell. Medical attention for you, your grandmother, and your uncles. We don't need nothing from you. Uncle Roy, he's very smart. Then why ain't he find the gold? He found a whole room downstairs we never found. It'll have gold in it? No. Then we have to... W wait! Uh, let me think. He's stalling. Shut up! I know where your gold is. Bullshit. You're just trying to... The cross on this altar is backwards. Altars face east in churches because it's believed that God will rise from the east with the sun. This is facing west. He's always like this? It's kinda his vibe. In ancient Egypt, royalty kept their most prized possessions behind what they called ten men safes. An object heavy enough that only ten men could move it. The thinking was that no single man or even small group could rob the realm on their own. Loyalty by logic. Look at the floor around the altar. It's worn. It's been moved a few times throughout history. Perhaps to put gold in it. He's desperate. He just wants us to put our guns down. Ask yourself, Russell. Does what I'm saying make sense? Yes. Good man. Well, all right. Let's try and... Not so fast. We need your word. The five of us help you lift this altar, and you find the gold you're looking for, you'll let us go on our way. You're going to trust him? It's the best option we have. Deal.
It moved! <laughs> we need everyone! You want the gold? We want you to have it, but you need to help. Fine. We'll set the guns down, but don't get any ideas. Everyone, count of three. One, One two, two, three! three. <laughs> Holy shit! The guy's like a goddamn bloodhound! There must be 50 gold bricks in there! Man, is it pretty! You ever seen that much gold, Mr. Clark? Not outside of a museum. Smart guy. How much is it worth? Bars that size would be about 24 ounces. Depending on market value... Cut to the chase. 20 million dollars? Look who finally found the gold! You two digging up every hole and grave in town, and I used my mind. <laughs> One for you, Janet. Gee, thanks. One for you, Mike. Are you serious? Well, maybe not one for you. <laughs> okay, fine. What the hell you doing? I'm buying their silence. And a bar for you, Mr. Clark. Job well done. Lovely. A well-paid hostage. This is the stupidest plan I've ever heard. I don't think you're in a place to judge my plans anymore. They're gonna talk. They won't. They have no reason to. It's logic. Isn't that right, Mr. Clark? Forget logic. They know about all this. And the cops are eventually gonna look for that farmer. Oh, I really wish you hadn't just said that. I thought you were the farmer, Uncle Roy. Uh, I... Um. Why would you say that, Uncle Al? We can pretend like we don't know. Anything. We don't know anything about anything. Nothing about nothing. Let's go see about this cave. I guess if we're gonna die, it's kind of the right place. Huh. Your morbid nature is finally appropriate. <sighs> I don't want to die being appropriate. You don't have to do this, Russell. It's not my choice, Mr. Clark. Bullshit! You did all of this, and we're gonna die because of it. Not if I can help it, I freeze! The gun from that woman's purse! Don't you dare. It's okay. Nah, it's not okay. Now put your gun down, I'm gonna shoot your nephew. Russell! It's fine. It's not fine. It is fine. There's no bullets in that gun. Hold up, what? We've been here three years. I already tried firing it. Man, stop lying! Well, shit. Man, I was really hoping that was gonna work. Michael, you had that gun earlier when you tried to leave town. Yeah, why? I think I know why we couldn't leave. Russell, ask yourself, why did they hide the gold? To protect it from people trying to get it. No, they hid the gold. Not to protect it from the world, but to protect the world from the gold. It's cursed. You don't believe in ghosts, now you believe in curses? You were there, Russell! Mike walked out of town and came back. Because he tried to take something that belonged to the town. Russell, remember the song. On the cold, damp ground, we'll all sleep sound. Except when wolves come howling round. We were the wolves who came howling round. Yeah, and they sure did stop sleeping sound. Russell, they wouldn't let us leave with just an old broken gun. What do you think happens if you try to leave with that gold? I've had enough. You gonna shoot him, or you want me to? Russell, listen to me. Whoever hid this gold must have tried to leave, but couldn't. That woman dead in the street, she was dressed to leave with a gun. And she died suddenly, and violently. You try and take that gold, I don't think any of you ever make it out of Hatley alive. Boy? I got you this far. We're not shooting them. Fine, we'll leave them down here then. Let time do the job for us. How nice of you. Goodbye, everyone. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Sure you are. Push the church organ in front of the hole. <clears throat> we shouldn't have to do this! You brought him here. And you two killed that farmer, and then opened your stupid mouths! Careful now, or you'll join him. Now, let's gather up that gold. Mike, get back up here! We tried already, Paul. All of us, it's no use. 
What's going to happen, Mr. Clark? We're in an underground chamber that hasn't had eyes on it in 70 years. In an abandoned town that no one knows about. Eventually, the oxygen in the room, well, someone will find us sometime in the next century. This is all my fault. Don't say that. We're the ones who wanted to get drunk. And I'm the one who drove my students into a haunted town that we couldn't escape if it was occupied by madmen in search of cursed gold. When you say it like that... Paul! What? Don't spend your last moments wasting your last moments. <sighs> These things are heavier than steel. They're made out of gold, dummy. Hurry up. It's freezing. That's not the only reason we should get out of here. Did you really believe what you said, Mr. Clark? About the curse? On one of my digs in the Italian countryside, an elderly man walked up to me and handed me an envelope. He said he'd taken something from the area as a young man and he'd had a terribly unlucky life. Now that we were excavating, it all made sense. He wanted to return what he'd taken in hopes that he made it into heaven. What was inside the envelope? A single coin. Did you guys hear that? Maybe they came back. Mr. Clark? I don't have an answer for this one. Unless... Russell! It's him! They can move things? He knows we're on his side. Hey, bud! Um, thanks! If he knows that we're not a threat and he can do that, then... Speed it up, boy. Speed it up. I am. They're keeping up. Who's keeping up? Doesn't matter. Slam the gas. Why'd you stop? I didn't know they could do that. The little freak. Try right through them. Well, go on. He's stopping the truck. Holy shit. You keep saying that. It keeps on being a holy shit moment. Put it in reverse. I can't see. Just keep going. What's happening? They're, they're alive. Watch out for the train. What's happening, Mr. Clark? Collapse. Get out, boy. Get out. Uh, uh, Help me with Mama. You yeah. handle you yourself. I'm getting the gold. Uh, uh, now just settle down, you little shit. Uncle Roy! Give me that gold bar. No! Give me the bar. <laughs> Roy! What happened to my Roy? Someone help me out of here. I'll be right there, Mama. Right after I just get a few of these. No, you can't. They won't let you. You, you get away from me, you little demon. Just stay right there. <laughs> All of you, get away. No. No. Ah! Ah! What's going on? Jose! Russell! Grandma! Hush! Where y'all go? Guys! Help! Yeah, I don't know about that. Mr. Clark! I'm sorry, Russell. I'm not. Take it! Take it! Is that the logical conclusion? Pteranodon. I think we know what happened to that lady. <sighs> no! What do we do now, Mr. Clark? This gold... Out in the open like this, someone else could stumble upon it. 
I'm not touching that shit. Everyone, it's okay. We re-hit the gold. And blocked the entrance to the burial chamber. What about the bodies? The new ones? For now, they can be left as a warning to others. What do we tell people happen here? I'm not quite so sure yet. Shall we figure it out on the walk back? Provided we're let out of town. Everyone, check your pockets. All clear. Nothing here. Me either. I'm set. Off we go. All right then. Now, Mr. Clark, we're all sorry about David. Yeah. Uh huh. Real sorry. Thank you, Michael. Daniela, Paul, Janet. Thank you. Students. Let's go home.